Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. Today we're going to look at number 13 on the Elementary 53 Math MTEL. Now this is a, if you're a teacher preparing for the Math MTELs, you'll find these videos very helpful. I'm hoping. I'm really hoping. That's the, that's the whole goal of doing this. They're, they're, the ultimate goal is to help get you exposure to the math and get exposure to the style in which the math MTELs are, uh, are presented. They present the math in a certain way, which is different than maybe a traditional math exam that you've taken before. So use these videos to help get into the math and into the style. And if you need extra help on these, you know, you should attend one of the workshops in Boston or in Cambridge, um, the Go Math workshops, because they will really uh, help you make some new connections. But for now, you're sitting at home. Your uh, the kids are in the other room maybe, or you're you're at work after school, um, and you you have some study time. So use this video to help you. Let's look at it a little closer. Number thirteen. If a fraction a over b is simplified to its lowest terms, which of the following must be true? A a or b is a prime number. B a is less than b. C, A is equal to 1 and B does not equal 0, or D, A and B only have 1 as a common factor. I love this problem. I love it because, again, it's one of those problems that's so simple and so confusing. Now, this, this thing right here, A and B is a fraction, so I know I'm dealing with fractions. And it's simplified to lowest terms, so it's not going to be a fraction like 2 over 4, because that's not simplified to its lowest terms. I could still reduce this to one half. And we're going to come back to this one because there's a lot to learn. That The secret to the answer is actually understanding this one. You know what? Let's just cut to the chase. Chris, just cut to the chase and tell us the secret to this problem. Well, the whole secret to this problem is that 2 and 4, they can be reduced which means that, you know, they currently, at the moment, if I'm thinking about the factors in which they share, the factors are 2 or 1 and 2, and the factors of 4 are 1, 4, and 2. At, the, at this moment in time, they still share, the greatest common factor is a 2. So you could divide 2 by 2 and get 1. You could divide 4 by uh, 2 and get 1. Now, if you do that, you've reduced it, to its lowest terms. Now what does lowest terms mean? It means that this fraction here, the 1 only has 1 as a factor and the 2 has, right, 1 and 2 as a factor. Lowest terms means that your number only has 1 as a common factor. So ultimately A and B, they're reduced to lowest terms when A and B only share 1 as a common factor. Okay, I jumped, the, I jumped to the answer, D, only because I wanted you to understand the answer. But um, if you were going about it a, a traditional way, you could do a guess and check method. And that would help you address these, all these other ones here. So let's say A or B is a prime number. Um, this is true. It says must be true. Well, I could have 1, right? And I could have 4. Now, 4 is not prime, because remember, the rule of prime is it only has two, factor, uh, two factors, one in itself, and 4 has 1, 4, and 2, so that one doesn't work. But it only says or, so it only has to be one of them. So what about 1? Well, 1 is 1 in itself, right? Those are the two factors of 1. No, you can't have 1 in itself and count that as 2. So we, we, we'll say here 1 fourth is a really good example of a fraction where both the denominator, the 4, and the numerator, the 1, are not prime. And yet, it is an, a fraction that's reduced to its lowest terms. So we'd cross this one off. Remember, we have to find the example that must work. So there can't be a, so it has to work. You can't find an, an example like 1 fourth that uh, disproves it. A is less than B. Okay, well in this case, 1 fourth, A is less than B. But what if it was, um, what if it was uh, 3 halves? Well, A in this case, right, because A is on the top, would be greater than B. 
the, we the two, and guess what? Three halves is reduced to its lowest term, so <laughs> this is disproved. A doesn't necessarily have to be less than B. Now, A is equal to one, but B does not equal a zero. True, B doesn't, B can't equal zero. You can't have a zero in the denominator. But it's not a, so that is true, but it's not a requirement that A has to equal one, right? We have plenty of fractions like two thirds, you know, or, you know, three sevenths, where A is not equal to one and these fractions are still reduced to lowest terms. So I want you to understand why A is incorrect, B is incorrect, C is incorrect. This will help go through that core math. Definitely understand D, but make sure you understand why these other ones are also wrong as well. Okay, team, the answer is D here. If you didn't, if you didn't pick that up in the beginning, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're enjoying these videos. Take care. Bye-bye. Hi team. I wanted to uh, encourage everyone, if you have time, to check out one of the MTEL Math workshops. This is a great time to make new connections in the math. It's two days, one or two day workshop. Uh, you can go to GoMath and find out more information. Take care. Bye-bye.